Hello. I have been in quite the DIY mood lately and after my last video where I made a bloody pearl necklace inspired by John Galliano's, I wanted to do a sort of similar project except this time it's going to be a garment. Like everybody else, I have been in love with the Maison Margiela kiss shirts since the first time I saw them and I've always wanted to recreate it. I don't know the exact number of kiss shirts that were made originally. I've seen anywhere from 7 to 45, but supposedly they were made from upcycled vintage shirts, which is why the cut and style of each one looks different. But they're all basically white, long sleeve, collared, button down men's shirts. Funnily enough, this project and the last project are well known for being recreated and I thought that was a weird coincidence but I have wanted to make my own version of this for a long time so I'm finally going to do it. However, as much as I like the originals, I'm not a white clothing person and they're a little bit too plain for my own style. So here's what I think we're gonna do. I went to the thrift store a couple weeks ago in preparation for this project looking for a top to alter. I didn't really have anything particular in mind, I just knew that it had to have a collar because I felt like that was important to the look and it had to either be white or a light color because I wanted to dye it. When I was there I actually didn't really find too many pieces but I did find this. It is a short sleeved button down collared shirt. It is white. It is like 97% cotton and I love it so much. It has cute little gathers in the front. It has these puffed sleeves that are so cute. And most importantly is it reminds me so much of 1940s style blouses. I don't know where my thrifting luck comes from, but very, very happy that I found that because it's so perfect for this project. It just elevated the potential for this project like tenfold and I'm so excited. So the plan is to dye this top. I have pink writ dye. It's the version that you can use on synthetic clothing. I'm trying to lean into that sort of 1940s vintage style so I'm going to go for a pale pink. I also have a small amount of white cotton fabric because I want to put it in the dye bath along with the top and try to get it to be the exact same color for two reasons. One, I really really want to try to make fabric buttons and replace the ones on the top just because I like the idea of that more. I think it'll lean more into that vintage aesthetic as well. Two, because I would like to have some scrap material to test the actual kiss prints on later and if all of that goes to plan and nothing has uh, failed, we're gonna do the kiss prints, which I think my plan for that is to use fabric paint. I have red paint and hopefully that goes well too. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm very excited. I'm very nervous because this could go wrong every step of the way. So fingers crossed. Yeah, I think that's it. I am going to start with dyeing the top. So let's go do that. So the thing is, with the synthetic dye, you're supposed to do it on a stove top. It says 200 degrees or higher, and you're supposed to maintain the heat the whole time. I don't have a pot that is big enough for dyeing, and I don't have a pot that I can dedicate to dyeing, so we're gonna have to do what we can. I have done this before, just in a bucket, the way that I normally do dyeing with like wool and stuff, and it's worked out fine, and I'm only going for a really pale color, so I'm not too worried about having to maintain heat, but here's what I'm gonna do. I have a black bucket in the tub that I use for dyeing. The water from the shower gets pretty hot. It gets to be like 140 or whatever the normal temperature is for dye, and I have a fair large pot of water heating up on the stove and I'm gonna bring that in and add that. I have in the past like put tin foil over it when I wanted something to be very vibrant but I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna dip the shirt in and probably honestly not keep it in there for too long because I am trying to go for something really pale so it should be fine. I'm going to fill it up like maybe a third or halfway with water from the shower as hot as this will get. And then I'll pour the rest from the stove in and mix it around because I want the color to be pretty diluted. So I am gonna add a lot of water. And then I'm supposed to add a teaspoon of dish soap. I tried to look up a recipe for a light pink just to get an idea of how much I should use. And one of the recipes said like a tablespoon of this. So I think I'm only gonna put like maybe a tablespoon or two in here because I really wanna try to go for a light color. Like I said, if it comes out darker, it's fine, but we're gonna try. 
Oh, I'm also gonna throw this in. Uh, this is the fabric. It's 100% cotton, 18 by 21 inches. Um, okay, so teaspoon of this, I'm just gonna eyeball it and the dye. I'm just gonna use this cap and do a couple cap pulls. My method for dyeing is never proper. I'm never really trying to get an exact color. I just think it's more fun to throw stuff in and see what happens, so keep that in mind. So the shirt is right here. I am going to put it in the tub and spray it down with warm water and then put it in. So fingers crossed. Um, I'm actually gonna throw this in first and just see what this looks like, just to get an idea of what the color is gonna be. Ready? Go. Ooh. Oh my goodness. <gasps> All right, let's just go for it. Oh my God. All right, I'm just gonna leave it in there and let it really soak. I'm honestly so happy that this is more of like a purpley pink. So I'm very happy about that. There are some spots that like are not taking the dye and I don't know why. Every single time I dye, it comes out faintly splashy and I don't know why it is. I kind of don't mind it. Most of the time, it just looks like cool and hand dyed. So I'm expecting that to happen anyways. All right, it's been five minutes. It's a pretty medium shade of pink, I would say. But that's because it's wet. I'm gonna call it done. Oh, you know what? It's so Barbie pink. Oh, it's perfect. This came out pretty much like the same color. It's a little bit more purple, but... All right, I'm just gonna wash these out really quick. Now we're gonna do the fixative. So I'm just gonna fill this bucket back up with hot water from the shower and then pour half of this in because I'm only doing one top. I'm gonna put that in, I think it's for 20 minutes. Yeah, so there's the scrap fabric and our Barbie pink top. I will be back in 20 minutes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. I am gonna go ahead and rinse this out and we'll look at it while it's wet and then we will see how it looks when it dries. in the dirt <laughs> it's okay um, I just brought it outside because I wanted to show you what it looked like wet in the sunlight it's quite vibrant <laughs> but it is wet the piece of white cotton fabric matches pretty well so if I can do the buttons this should work still don't know if that'll happen but we'll see I'm just gonna leave it out here for a little while to dry a bit just until it stops dripping and then I'm gonna bring it inside because it's been raining quite a bit but otherwise I would say that this is a success so far minus the dirt <laughs> else to say other than it came out perfect. I was a little worried, I'm not gonna lie, that it was gonna come out darker. I guess technically it's like a tiny bit darker than what I was envisioning, but now that I see this color, I think this is perfect and exactly what I want. It looks very confectionery, sugary. When it was drying, the fabric, which matches perfectly by the way, the fabric dried faster and appeared lighter. So I was worried this was gonna be darker and not match, but this is just a little bit thicker of a material 
island took longer to dry. I woke up the next morning and was so incredibly pleasantly surprised. It's absolutely perfect. It is cool toned, it is pale, but still vibrant. I cannot believe there's like basically no splotchiness. This is the first time in my life that I've ever dyed something where it hasn't come out patchy. I'm wondering if it was because of how diluted it was, but yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon. I cannot put into words how happy I am that this worked out. Step one was a success. Now, I spent the last few days trying to figure out my button situation. Long story short, the original intention was to just buy one of those little fabric button making kits that makes it really simple, but I couldn't find one in the size that I wanted at multiple stores, and I don't feel like ordering online. I bought satin fabric buttons, and I tried to dye those, and that didn't work. And then I bought two other sets of buttons, both plastic, because when I dyed this shirt, it actually turned the buttons pink, which is so cool that that an option. That was my backup plan was to just keep those buttons on there for now. But I did try to dye one set of buttons that didn't work out because it came out too dark and the buttons were too big to fit through the buttonholes. So I tried to dye the second set of buttons. Those actually came out a completely fine color, but I didn't like how they looked. The holes were too big and it just, it looked weird. <sighs> So very long story short, I just ended up doing fabric buttons the old fashioned way and I just wanna quickly show you how I did it in case you're interested and then we can move on. So what I did is I took about a one by one inch square of fabric and I cut it into a circle about maybe a quarter of an inch bigger than my button and then I took a needle and some pink thread and I sewed a running stitch in a circle about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. You don't wanna do it too close to the edge because the edges are raw and you might have issues with fraying. After I have stitched a circle, I will trim that edge down a little bit to make things easier, and then I'll pull it tight to bunch it up, open it up again, stick my button in there and hold it in, and then pull it tight again. So the button's all wrapped up inside, and then I honestly just chaotically stitch up that bunch of fabric in the back and trim it up a little bit and uh, once I feel like it's good and secure I knot it and I cut my thread and then I put a little bit of uh, fabric glue on the back just to make sure everything's secure because it is raw edges and yeah fabric buttons I did about 16 of them it took like two hours but got it done and i'm very very happy with them it's a small part of this project but i felt like it was important because it to me gives a very vintage feel and it makes the buttons blend in with the top a little bit more i am going to wait though until the end to stitch all those buttons on because it's probably going to take me about an hour and i only have limited time today to film it is raining so it's dark and it's getting darker and i really want to get these lip prints done. So I think we are going to go ahead and move over to my desk and get started with that. <laughs> I am going to make a reference first with actual lipstick because that's what I'm trying to replicate. I think with this, less is going to be more. I have red and brown fabric paint. It's basically like acrylic paint, but for fabric. I also have water over here in case I want to try to dilute it. Let's just start with the lipstick. I also have makeup wipes and cotton rounds to try to keep things clean. This is just an old lipstick. I don't even know what it is. It's it's really old. I'm not going to do this nicely. I'm just going to put it on. All right, there it is. I'm just going to try to get a nice kiss print. Maybe I should put something down. Here, I'm going to do it on this so it's a little bit more flat. Hey, that worked. That was really cute. Look at it. Am I supposed to have my mouth closed? I don't know, but that came out really cute. I'm gonna do a couple. Does this look really stupid? I tried to close my mouth on this one, but it's kind of hard to kiss a flat surface. I'm gonna try it like this. I don't think that's really that much better. The first one I did and the second one I think came out the best. I'm just gonna put this off to the side here as my reference. What I think I'm gonna do first, because I don't wanna complicate this if I don't have to, which is typically my style, I am just gonna start with the red fabric paint, the beauty blender, and try to do a light coat on my lips quickly so that it stays wet and um, see how that looks. <gasps> I just poured so much paint all over my leg. One moment. 
All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh, I don't know, <laughs> do it. This might be easier with a paintbrush. It's probably just easier with a paintbrush. This is the paint, by the way. I think it's too, it needs to be watered down. You're crooked. How do I wanna do this? Uh, I'll be right back. I'm using a margarita glass for washing out my brush, but I think I'm gonna put my paint in this. Okay, we're just gonna try something like this. It's not perfect. Paint and water. That's better. This one. It's a weird shape, but I think it's fine. I'm gonna keep trying and make sure I get the hang of it and then we'll go for it. <laughs> it seems like the best way to do it is extremely watered down paint where it basically looks like watercolor. These are the ones that I did more watered down. I don't think it's really much use putting it off any longer. So let's go ahead and actually go for it. I'm gonna try to just replicate this as best as possible. It's not clean, it's not perfect. It's supposed to look realistic, so. Also, they're like different colors and it looks like they used paint. I don't know. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna button this up first. I took a piece of a paper bag. I'm just gonna put it in between here so that I don't get any paint on the inside. I'm just gonna go for it. Let's start with this one. Let's start with the collar. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna go for right here. I think that's fine. Cute. All right, I feel better. I feel better knowing that it's supposed to look random and sporadic and messy. I messed up a little bit on this one. The paint was so wet, it was starting to drip. So I tried my best with a paintbrush to fix it. I don't know if it's gonna look okay. It's quite dark. Well, 
I don't know what to say. It came out so cute. I can't believe this worked. It came out exactly how I wanted it to, which is really surprising. The color is perfect. The kiss prints came out great. I did end up going in with a little paintbrush and touching up some spots, but otherwise it's pretty much just how it was when I did it. And the color of the top is even, the buttons look perfect. I'm so happy I managed to get the buttons to look the way I wanted them to. I did not realize that there were two buttons up here, so I used two of the original buttons. So technically these are different than these, but you can't tell. I'm very, very happy. I'm over the moon. Highly recommend if you like this sort of look to do it yourself because it's so fun. Something I realized between this project and the last one is that they're both pieces that look like there's a story behind them and I think that's why I'm attracted to them. Taking something sort of simple and adding this air of like mystery to it that I really like and it's just really cute. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very fun to make. I can't stop looking at it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.